the kind of this wrap-up slide we've used across all the different panels. What are the key messaging points? And we'll we'll kick off the discussion uh, with another cameo experience. Um, cameo appearance by Mike Moore talking about this particular aspect of wellness. So, Mike, what are some of the key message points that we should have when we're trying to focus on wellness when we're selling new homes? When you talk about a new home, it needs to be talked about as healthier. And obviously, we've gone through strange two or three years this past two or three years. That's not the reason for this. I'm talking about as I am the nephew of an architect and Back in the day, he talked about as we started to build tighter and seal the house up more, he talked about that it wasn't healthy. Well, obviously, we need to build tighter and then ventilate, which we hadn't done. Now, if we're really building the, the tight shell that's quieter, that's cleaner, that's healthier, and then ventilating correctly and filtering that ventilation for clean air and clean water, now I've got a healthier home. One of the huge advantages of buying new overused is that I've got a clean, healthy, <clears throat> quiet home that I can feel good about moving forward. To give you an idea, I bought new recently and my kids bought two phases before in a different, under a different code and we waited, paid a little more but our house is quieter, it uses less energy, and this is just a phase apart based on code that still isn't all the way as far as it can be pushed, but it's quieter, it's cooler, it's, it's warmer when it's supposed to be. Our life in the house is better because of the structures and systems to build tight, to insulate correctly, I wasn't even aware that for years we didn't have to inspect insulation. Now we inspect the insulation so it's installed properly. Loss, less loss of heat and cool. The wrap the home in foam, the additional insulation in the, the roof lines along with the ceilings. All those things will make your home healthier, more energy efficient, but more than anything, they make my life better. So I'm willing to pay you for that house that's newer and I'm willing to sell my five-year-old home to move into that new one because I want new, not old and used. So be careful that you're not building an old home that hasn't been lived in. As an industry, we've done that for years. We've built old homes, we've built an old code. We're the only industry I know that builds to a minimum standard that isn't even the new minimum standard. It's usually two or three or four or five years old and we're still building to it and we fight to build to that rather than pushing to build a better product and sell it for more money. Thoughts, reaction to that? You know, I don't know, just to echo, I don't know how you can do a better summary, quieter, cleaner, uh, more efficient homes, healthier homes. And uh, you know, that's really what we're looking at, the value that we're trying to provide to today's homeowner. Why would they want to buy a new home? Well. He summed it up beautifully. I, mean, I don't know how much more you can add. If you go into the research on <laughs> CO2 levels, just like yeah. that aspect, let alone you know whether there's other particulates, once it gets above certain levels, mental cognitive functioning starts to decrease yeah. significantly. And, and this is where there's been a lot of research done in classrooms, is that it's harder for students to pay attention. It's harder for them to grasp concepts. And you imagine taking that into your home, how well are you going to sleep at night when you've got yeah. good low CO2 levels? How well are you going to be able to function if you're working from home, particularly right. in today's age where we've got a lot more remote workers? It seems like there's a tremendous amount of benefits. Well, and health and safety is also luxurious. I mean, if it's a healthier home, it's, your, your lifestyle is elevated in an earlier, earlier presentation. So let's help builders sell that benefit. Yes, we're spending more money on health and safety and in some parts of the market, People are going to say, yes, I want to spend more money on health and safety. And in other segments of the market, it's going to be, I want to be more luxurious, which means it needs to be healthier and safer. It's the same, it's the same building. It's just presented differently yeah. to, the, to the consumer. Yeah, my main takeaway, and I thought it was good, it, you know, he, he did you know, uh, support a lot of things we were talking about uh, the, you know, this afternoon. Um, but I thought that the thing is, is that, you know, uh, differentiating with a new home 
versus an existing home, which you're also competing against, right? And that, <laughs> and that the health, you know, that you can in a new home, you have that competitive advantage of being able to really, you know, design a healthy home, where you know where you know in the existing home. The, you know, the te- even if it was five years old, right? The technology has changed, and I think that was a, that to me. That was a big key key takeaway is that you know because that's that's something builder, builders are challenged with too, right? You're not you're not just competing against other new new homes. You're competing against existing homes, you know. Yep. And Absolutely. and that and that's a really you know point of differentiation because you know the uh, you know even even a five year old home doesn't have you know near the technology that could go in in a new home today. Okay, we've got a few minutes left. I'll kind of turn it over to Q&A here. Katie's got the microphone. Any questions you have for anyone here on the panel or even for our sponsor, Taz, or any other insights that you've seen in the market when it comes to, to wellness? As I know we kind of got a little bit narrow and didn't spend as much time on light and sound and some of those other things because of who we have at the table. Taz, please. So earlier we were talking about kind of ways that we can visualize indoor air quality or kind of sell indoor air quality to um, our potential homeowners, right? And that's always been a difficult task because you're right, it's invisible, right? And without something like a sensor, without being able to showcase some of those studies that you had mentioned, it's not something that someone thinks about on their first um, pass when building a home. They're looking at countertops, they're looking at visual things, right? And one of the things that um, our builder did, uh, Southern Green Homes, that was in the video was he had a very, what I thought was an ingenious method of doing that, which was giving one of the sensors um, to the actual homeowner before right. they actually move in. So that they, when they, they can take it back home and correct. see what it's like in their old home compared to the new home. Exactly. And so that gave them a, a baseline, if you will, of what they're living in today, all the actions that they're doing, right? So it set that expectation up that, even when you move into this new home, you're going to see spikes when you cook. You're going to see spikes when you take a shower, but you should be able to also see that ability to drop those levels a lot quicker than before, <clears throat> whereas in the past you might have had those spikes up, but they would have maintained over a longer period of time, which means you were breathing in those pollutants for that period of time. So I just wanted to add that. I thought it was a really neat way of showcasing both personal data from their own homes as well as you know having a point of comparison for the future new home that they're going to be in. Yeah, what's what's the routine that I go through when I cook, when I sleep at night? What are those levels? What do they look like? And you maybe take that a bit further, and maybe some of you are doing this. I mean, we have such a prevalence of, like, Airbnbs now. You know, can you make one of your demo homes an Airbnb for a potential buyer and say, come spend the night, go through the routine here in this home, get a feeling for what this shower and design looks like, cook on the stove, sleep in the bed, and, and then I'll be able to compare the, the data and how do you feel? How do you sleep at night? Um, exactly. Is anyone doing that? Letting, letting their customers actually sleep in a model home? I, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Two model homes. <laughs> it, it, it gives them a real feel for what those features are and, and uh, as they're making decisions. Yes, Ken. Hey, if I'm a a builder and I'm depending on my HVAC contractor to design the systems. But but, but I may you know dictate to them, I may give them a prescription of hey I want a, a radiant barrier floor. I want, you know, we HRV system, I want um, whole house ventilation for my bath fans, etc. And he's gonna design it. How do I know what resources are available to me to know whether he's designed the right system? Well, in in our situation, you know, we we work with you uh, as as our partner, but understand that's that's normal, right? The situation you just explained. So, what we do is ask you to introduce us to your contractor, and then work with him. We also want to work, you know, with you know, like a rater if you have your rater involved, and and kind of create a team, your team, you know, to work and and we work on your behalf. Uh, but you know, I think in most cases when the the, the, the contractor sees what's in it for him, right? That it's, it's a good thing for him, you know, then, then, and then everybody can win. Um, but that's working for us, right? Is, is work with you, you know, you introduce us to your contractor, we talk to him, you know, we, we, like I said, we get everybody involved and create kind of a project, you know, a team, a task force to, to address this. And then, you know, make sure that everybody's 
um, you know, criteria and, and what they're trying to accomplish, including the contractor, is, is taken care of. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it really needs to be a team, right? And, but, yeah, that's the way it is today, but that's why we work kind of through you to your contractor. And I think that's what has to happen. All right. We are at time. So um, thanks. Uh, please join me in a round of applause for our, our, both our panelists and our sponsor. Now is the time. The Exhibit 4 is open. You're welcome to continue the discussions with anyone up here on, on the, the panel. We'll see you back in this room tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's going to be fun. We're going to talk about modular panels and SIPs. And I'm really excited about both our morning session, which is what do we do if we just want to dip our toe in the water? And then the lunch session is going to be like, I'm ready to go whole hog on panelization, modularization. So um, I look forward to it. We'll see you tomorrow.